how do we really know that they're enforcing that? How do we not know who really has access? I went to my local police department. I actually submitted an open records request here locally. This was before I got into elected office and asked for some information about my local sheriff's department's relationship with the Tennessee Fusion Center. They sent me back a letter saying that they would be glad to provide me with more information, but that I'd have to come down there and give my driver's license. And I actually was placed in the interrogation room. Um, wow. And I, I, I took my husband with me. I took uh, uh, Karen Miller, who at, at the time was a citizen like me and is now on the county commission with me, a uh, fellow commissioner. And I took a member of the press. Uh, with me, a uh, man that runs Truth Radio here locally, and they placed all four of us in the interrogation room, and then they didn't give us very much information. Um, so I was not able to get very much uh, out of local government. I was not able to get very much information out of state government. Uh, I just know what I've researched and looked on the internet and looked at reports, and at, you know, and I'm an outsider looking, trying to look in. And it's very, it's very concerning. Um, you know, the um, if you look at what they collect and share and store, there's a report out there, and in Appendix C, the Fusion Center guidelines, that lays out what they collect. Um, and you, they collect. Uh, if you look at Appendix C, they, they're, they're these. Fusion centers are encouraged to collect things, agriculture, food, water, environment, banking, finance, chemical industry, hazardous materials, criminal justice, education, emergency services, energy, government, health and public health services, hospitality and lodging, information and telecommunications, military facilities, defense, industrial base, Postal and shipping, private security, public works, real estate, retail, social services, transportation, and if that doesn't sound like everything in your daily life, it goes on oh, yeah. to say that that's no not comprehensive. It's just a starting point. You know? It sounds and like that. Are the fusion centers federally funded? They are, but they are also um, they are also locally or not local um, state funded as well. There may be some local funding if you have a regional rather than a state fusion center. Uh, in Tennessee, they get some drug funding, uh, but they, there is the federal funding. And because there's the federal funding, they have to follow the federal rules. And so, you know, I, I'm of the opinion that while the state and local governments were saying, well, you weren't, you federal government weren't sharing enough information. Uh, hey, hey uh, let's slow down. we got to... Music break is on. Okay. Letting us know we got a commercial break. Hey, folks, we'll be back. We've got two more segments. Start by Fusion Center. Stay tuned. And welcome back to the Truth Attack Hour. My guest this afternoon is Blunt County. That's Eastern Tennessee. A Blunt County commissioner named Tana Monroe. And I'll just tell you an aside. She's a uh, she, she's just like me. She's a slave to the dogs. Well, uh, uh, don't you do agree that your pets are uh, Democrats that have to be taken care of? <laughs> well, they do, yeah, they do, but they don't ask for a whole lot. You know, they, they, food in their belly and a pet on their head. They're a whole lot cheaper <laughs> than the welfare <laughs> government run welfare. So yeah, that's so true. But they break, they make the world a lot better place. Yeah, now, we've been talking about we've been talking about fusion centers. So let's get down to the fusion centers, and then I want to move on to whatever that facility is in in Utah. Do you know much about that? I don't know a whole lot about that, but I suspect that that's probably where they're you know organizing and sorting through all of this. You know, uh, they're collecting large sums of of data and information and. They're probably collecting every email and phone call we make, and the, the while that is horrifying and unconstitutional and immoral and just flat out evil, um, it it the the good thing right now that we have going for us is that they are collecting so much data that they just don't know what to do with it, you know, and and 
So, but they are getting better and better. You know, the computer algorithms and things can be rewritten, and uh, they're getting better at it. Uh, but it's they are collecting so much information that they're on information overload right now. I think that by collecting, well, they'll change with time. They'll get they'll get better. They will. You know, I think we would do a whole lot better for the safety of Americans to be collecting information on the criminals rather than on every law-abiding citizen. You know, well, and but the, but that's originally what law enforcement was designed to do. You know, we have the National Crime Information Center where, you know, they keep information regarding specific uh, criminals. You know, just like the, this couple down there got caught last night down there in Pensacola. You know, they've been doing robbing here, and they're from Missouri, and... You know, they hit Alabama and Florida, and then they, one of them got killed last night. But, you know, the, the whole, the, to me, you know, working in the field of law enforcement from a defensive angle, you know, I just get to see how the government collects information on real criminals. But you're telling us that in reference to fusion centers, you know, that is not the sole purpose of it. They want to collect and, and, and document and, and keep a a log, you know, all the information that they po possibly can about every building, every road, every, you know, system in this country, all the people, you know, down to every molecule of the of the earth. They're collecting yes. all that information in the fusion centers. Yeah, as a matter of fact, there was a bullet, uh, they, a report issued here to the, uh, from the Utah fusion centers a few days ago warning the police about disaffected individuals or domestic extremists traveling to the Lavoie Finicum funeral. You know, that's the one that the Oregon yeah. police and FBI murdered. And, um, you know, and you can see them murder him on, on the, the drone video. And so, you know, basically they're saying, watch out for these people that are coming to his funeral because they're armed and could be dangerous. You know, when when the simple fact is is that it was the government that murdered him, not the other way around. Uh, you know, and we've seen the – I'm sure some of you uh, people listening are familiar with the MIAC report, the Missouri Information Analysis Center that came out when the – that was the thing that really started shedding light on these fusion centers. Um, the Missouri uh, Fusion Center issued a report basically saying that if you were a Ron Paul supporter, which I was, or a Chuck Baldwin supporter, which I was – you know, or a Bob Barr supporter, a Constitution Party, Libertarian Party, you know, that you might be one of these right-wing extremists. Uh, they warned in there about people that were, you know, uh, against abortion and all kinds of, you know, people that thought the United States was going to have an economic meltdown, all sorts of things that, uh, you know, you start looking into. And, and, and speaking of being labeled, you know, the DHS put out the report on right-wing extremists, and I fit a lot of those descriptions. And then they put out a report on left-wing extremists, and I actually met one of those because of my love for dogs. So I've been labeled a, a, a right-wing and a left-wing extremist, according to DHS. And so, I, you know, this this stuff is just basically the government has decided that we, the people, are the enemy, you know, yeah. and... Instead of, uh, of the, you know, government of the people for the people and by the people, it's government of the government for the government and by the government. And, you know, it's tyrannical. And it's up to us to rise up and push back because, uh, you know, I think people are going to be scared out of their minds if they don't learn what's going on and get involved. And, you know. Uh, you know, you know. Let, let me ask this question. You know, I don't know whether you've studied Common Core. But Common Core is also going to have a collection mechanism for information. They're going to have all this detailed information, not only about, you know, the, the educational accomplishments of any student in, in, in school. You know, it's going to be a, a, a background dossier on, on every, every blooming student. I can see something like that information ultimately finding its way into, uh, you know, the, the, these fusion centers. And given time, they're going to be, they're going to have a dossier on everybody, and that dossier will uh, include you know you pull up your name and you know here are all these uh, 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 electronic files regarding phone conversations you had with this party, phone conversation with this that party. You know here are your uh, uh, electronic records. You know I, I believe that. You know, there have been a lot of political events that have happened here in this country uh, since 9-11, and especially since the fusion centers and the facility in, 
in uh, Utah since it got rolling. I am sure that the people in power have used some of the collection informa- information that has been collected to affect politicians in Washington, D.C. They're using it for blackmail purposes. And imagine somebody like Hillary Clinton becoming president and having her hands on it. You know, she's going to blackmail every, every politician possible, and they'll blackmail it probably with fabricated evidence. Is that a real possibility? Yeah, that's a very real possibility. You know, one, one of the things that concerns me deeply is, is once this information gets put into the system, and ex- assuming it's false, how do you ever get this information out? Even if, let's say it's put into the Tennessee Fusion Center here that I'm a, you know, dog kicking, you know, uh, cop hating, uh, man hating extremist, and, you know, it, it, that's in the Tennessee Fusion Center. What if they share that with these other fusion centers? If the Tennessee Fusion Center goes in and says, oops, we made a mistake, delete it. Well, what if some of these others have already picked up on that information? It's yeah. kind of like a virus. How do you, or how are you going to get it out at that point? You know, yeah, it, no it's almost like, like we, we'll never have anything ever that can ever be expunged again. You know, and, and so I, I just, I, you know, it's a scary time <laughs> that we're headed toward. And, uh, you know, I, I'm quite certain that the government is collecting everything on us and they're, the biggest problem or challenge they're having right now is how to organize it and how to use it. But they are going to get better in the future, and so it's up to us to stand up and say not no, but heck no. You know, and, and uh, you know, I, I think they're collecting everything. I mean, they they just they admit it. And you know, just part of the fusion centers, what these they do is they gather information and they look for intelligence type stuff. And and but they don't even necessarily look for. The, it was sold on you know terrorism originally. Then it became terrorism and all crimes. But part of uh, what they are are gathering are will generate what's called a suspicious activity report or a SAR. Oh yeah. And you know it, I'm sure you've seen Big Sis, the former head of the DHS and Walmart, saying if you see something, say something. Well, to make a long story short, um, these SARS under the planning and, and, and requirements for develop, develop them, developing them in the baseline capabilities, it says the fusion centers in the absence of a spe- specified threat or risk should use SARS to analyze data trends and, and potential terrorist linkages. So basically, they're to use those, continue using them, even though there's no threat or risk. They're supposed to gather all these SARS and look at all this information. Rather than deleting it, since there's no risk or threat, they want these fusion centers to sit and study this data. So basically what the feds have done is is they've got each of these states to agree to sit around and collect information on their citizens and analyze it and and create these reports like Utah just the, the Utah Fusion Center did and said you know hey watch out for these people that might be traveling to the funeral of the guy that they just murdered you know or watch out for people that support Ron Paul you know um so that's the kind of stuff that's coming out they they're sitting around these are people collecting information they say, they think it's state or locally driven, but ultimately the feds have found a way to get the states to do their bidding for them. And, you know, it's just scary. Um, But I want to give you some information. The suspicious activity reports. um, Well, hey, let me me stop you right there. The suspicious activity report just, you know, that that arises from the currency transaction reports. In 1973, Congress comes along and passes his banking law. And, you know, for transactions over a certain amount, then it was $10,000. You know, a bank, if there was a withdrawal or a deposit of cash of $10,000 or more, they had to send a form to the Blumen IRS. You know, and, and now they've dropped the, uh, the, the amount. Now, now if you just do something suspicious, a bank's got to file a report with it from the IRS. Now you're telling me that the same term is being applied not just to financial transactions, but anything that the, the government could say is, quote, suspicious. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Um, there's a na- there was a nationwide um, 
uh, Suspicious Activity Report Initiative. Um, and they got together and developed all these guidelines and the capabilities. Um, and they based it on the LAPD. And, they, you know, a lot of these things are based on what Los Angeles or New York are doing. And um, the so LAPD put in place a program uh, and it, it, where they would gather and record and analyze stuff, and they said in their in their uh, special order for their their suspicious activity report that they were going to collect information of a criminal or a non-criminal nature, and they listed 65 behaviors that the LAPD had to. It said shall in there file a, uh, a suspicious activity report. Things like using binoculars. Di- uh, drawing diagrams, taking notes, measurements, you know, taking pictures, um, a- abandoning a-, a-, a vehicle, you know, all kinds of crazy things. Those uh, 65 behaviors, they had to report it as a suspicious activity report. And then they decided that, hey, the LAPD model should be the national model. And so basically they're going out collect- generating suspicious activity reports for non-criminal activity, you know, I mean, it's it's for basically existing, and you know, and, and I can just only imagine. I mean, right now, you know, big sis, if you see something, say something, and if you call, that may generate a suspicious activity report. You well, it know, sounds now, like to me that they, 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 they want to know how they want to know the psychological activities of uh, of the American people. They want to yes. study the American people like lab rats. Right, and they are, they are, they they very much are. They just right now are collecting so much information that they cannot um, analyze it all. But they are going to get better. The more they the more they do this, they'll get better and more tyrannical. And the more we will be conditioned to just think it's perfectly okay to live under the microscope all the time. Yeah. And, do they? Do, do, what do you know about the big uh, center there in 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 Utah? Do the fusion centers throughout the states communicate and provide information to it? Well, I haven't seen anything in writing that says that they do, but I do. I, I, you know, they're they're being driven by by DHS, and and so I, I highly suspect that they are. I, I, but you know, that's a federal uh, thing. The feds are collecting their information, but what they the feds are collecting a ton of information. So what they're doing is, is they're getting the states to keep collecting information that the feds can't manage themselves. And so I wouldn't be surprised to find out that they are not they are all uploading to a database, you know, that the feds all are right, well, accessing. Hey, don't, we got a break. Hey, folks, we got another 15 minutes. Come back in a few minutes. Welcome back to the final segment of this afternoon's show, the Truth Attack Hour. We've been talking about the fusion centers. Now, let's, it, it, let me ask this question. I have no doubt, I can't prove it, but I have no doubt if the Uncle Sam has spent a whole bunch of big bucks on setting up 78 or maybe more fusion centers all across the, the America, and then also setting one up, in, in a, a big one, in Utah, there's got to be some communications between the, the fusion centers and that that beast. They've got to have all that information that they want to get out of the fu- fusion centers that they they help fund. But this oh, yeah. thing this this has got to go to a, a higher level, doesn't it? Yeah, Is there ult- an international ult- connection ult- here? Ultimately, I think it does. Um, you know, the <coughs> DHS would have access. And that federal, what you're talking about out in Utah, I'm sure they're gathering it. Um, you know, FBI, I'm sure, has access to it. You know, they, we have so many ABC organizations that, uh, you know, and they were not, that there was a breakdown in the communication between all the ABC organizations with 9-11. So what did Congress do? Rather than going in and making them talk better together, they went and created in a whole new alphabet of ABC organizations. So I think, I've, I think that one in Utah is where they are gathering all that information. Um, but yeah, I think that there, this is probably global. 
uh, and I have good reason for thinking so. Um, with the Real ID Act, I mentioned earlier that that was kind of what got me into all of this. Uh, I, I was doing some research, and I found out about this company that started up, wasn't a real big company, called Visage, and then it became L1, and they were were collecting biometrics to do that, to do driver's licenses. You know, you heard about the Real ID Act. Well, that was the company that a lot of the states were contracting with to do their biometric uh, driver's licenses. And eventually, this this um, uh, L1 Solutions got bought up by Safran. Safran is a French conglomerate uh, partially owned by the French government and there's a, they have a subsidiary called Morpho Trust and I met a man that worked for Morpho Trust um, and he told me that states were sending in truckloads of information to Morpho Trust. He said when he worked there that Every morning they would have to get up. They'd have to go through scanners. They couldn't bring in phones or recording devices or cameras or anything along those lines. They had a lot better, apparently, security systems than the NSA. And they they would the states were sending tractor trailer loads of of documents to be scanned in by Morpho Trust to create these databases on the on, on all citizens. The, the states were doing this. And uh, he said that Morpho Trust would frequently, frequently shut down their location and move to a new location so that nobody would figure out what they were doing. And uh, ultimately, he thinks that all of that information was sent to France, and I'm sure it was probably sent to Utah, too, because that's where the feds I think the feds have wanted the states to do these fusion centers and to do real ID because the, the states are the ones producing the birth certificates, the states are the ones producing the driver's licenses, you know, the marriage licenses, all this stuff is state uh, documents. And so the feds would have, you know, military, Social Security, Medicare, that type of stuff, but they didn't, they didn't have access to the state stuff unless the state gave it to them. I think the feds were motivated to do this, to gather all the, the documentation that the state had. He said that they were building a database on every citizen. Um, you know, in Tennessee, they rolled this, this uh, L1 credentialing solutions, which got bought up by um, – Saffron rolled out kiosks. The state of Tennessee, the depart what was the Department of Safety. We do not have a DMV in Tennessee. We have the Department of Safety, and after 9/11, it became the Department of Safety and Homeland Security. And they rolled out these kiosks where to renew your driver's license, you just walk up to the kiosk and it scans your face and it knows who you are, and you can renew your driver's license by scanning your face. And so. They they have built the that's the goal of Real ID was to get a biometric photo, um, you know, of, of everybody. And so I was very adamant about fighting Real ID at the state level. I got a bill introduced in both house, both the House and the Senate. Got it passed through the Senate. Got it passed through the House subcommittee. And I made the mistake of not going back the following week because it had passed through the subcommittee, and they killed it in the the committee. Now, the the there were several of them that uh, had told me they were for the bill, and then turned and flipped and voted against it. That you know, right after telling me they were for it, I learned a very important lesson in government. Never think that your your work is done until it's actually done. Uh, I worked hard on that, and you know, got it through one house to so that Tennessee would not implement real ID. They would not implement a biometric a driver's license. And what I found out after they killed it in the House Transportation Full Committee, um, that I found out that the state, the Department of Safety and Homeland Security had already been implementing it anyway. And that's why they wanted it killed, and that's why they killed it at the last minute. They were already doing it. And the state legislature did not know that they were doing it. Wow. Uh, they, uh, and and so this was all being done um, by with this company that has been bought up 
by a, a, a company that's foreign owned. And this same company, you can go and look Saffron up, they've built a biometric um, database on several nations. They have a working relationship with China. I think Indonesia. I have to go back and verify all the different nations. But we are looking at one uh, company, one company, one foreign company building a biometric database of the world. You know, and and so this this man that worked for Morpho Trust felt like that all that information was being sent to France into a not just a a, a national but an international database. And I, you know, I, I really, you know, when I saw the ignorance of the state legislature and how they had already were they were already implementing Real ID, and not long after that rolled out these kiosks where you can just have your face scanned to renew your driver's license. I, I, you know, I, at that point, I abandoned the fight against Real ID because I knew it was already here. And, I, you know, um, I learned a very important lesson. I got a civics lesson out of it. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about what the government has on all of this. Um, he, you know, this man told me I, I was really, really strongly against Real, Real ID, but after I met him, he told me, he said, he said, Tana, he said, they already have photos on all of you. That's what they're gathering. That's what they're. That's what we were scanning into the system. He said one day the software engineers walked in and asked for a volunteer to test this software out. He said I volunteered. So he said I walked up. They scanned my face. He said they immediately were able to pull up in the software and knew who I was and knew everything about me. Wow. And. And so all of this is going on, whether you're aware of it or not. Now, exactly where all of the information is going, you know, I haven't been to France. I haven't been inside this. Uh, I just know what I've been told and what I read. And uh, I am very much concerned that that um, this is international. You know, and well, it, hey, it, let, we let know it's right there. Mary Stewart Ralph is a lady from uh, Montgomery. They wrote a book about all this back in the early 80s, and her conclusion was they were building a beast in the Netherlands. And her her projection was that you know there's going to be all this data regarding everybody in the world that's going to be on the on the beast, the computer in the Netherlands. So all and of that this may bits, be where the, the very that thing that she was talking about has been built. Yes, yeah, and that may be where they send it rather than France. It's just you know he he was certain fairly certain that they were sending it out all this information out of the country and you know and i you see saffron you know the 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 federal government had to approve allowing l1 to be purchased by saffron and they did they they allowed this company that that handled our driver's licenses to be purchased by a a uh you know french conglomerate you know and i i just you know, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, it was treasonous. You know, I mean, it yeah. just, you know, I. Well, what's I mean, to do at the federal level? Yeah, it, but yeah, it, you it, know, it, 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 whoever controls all the information about everybody in the in a country, they can affect where the country goes. They can they can use the information. You know, they can put in false information, or they can take the information they've already collected, and they can affect the politics. You know, they can affect what politically happens in a state. Just like, uh, you know, here recently, you know, the TPP went through. I'm sure that Barack Obama has all this dossier information on all the congressmen, and, and they let the congressmen know, hey, look, we've got this information about, you know, what you did in that last campaign, you know, and it, it could violate federal law. So you better keep your mouth shut while we push this bill through. And I suspect that that type of stuff goes on on a r- routine basis. It's always been, you know, it goes back to the Kennedys, to the Eisenhowers, probably FDR was doing all this. You know, Nixon was using IRS information to go after his opponents. Why in the world would, would we, why shouldn't we expect that politicians in power that have access to this, they're going to use it to uh, control politicians that are below them? And they're going to be able to dictatorially, you know, uh, establish a political agenda. Yes. That's very much true. Uh, it's very much a concern. Um, you know, we had uh, a FBI director that knew the dirt on everybody, and I, you know, I, 
it's unfortunate, but we really need to drastically shrink the size of the federal government. Um, but, I, you know, I'm not sure that we can. Uh, my suggestion for people is to get involved in state and local politics because, you know, I, if we were to work right now to get, uh, you know, I, I'm in Tennessee. If I were to work really hard to get a really, really good congressman in and really two really, really good senators, well, that's only three out of 535, and it would take a fortune to send three good people. You know, I mean, we're talking millions of dollars. And so I, I just don't think D.C. is fixable at this point. Um, you know, I think we've got to uh, take it on at the local level and take it on at the state level um, and, and fight. Those, those are, are, you know, now we may occasionally have to engage in the federal stuff when really draconian stuff comes up. But, you know, I, I think that our best, our, our most, of our, where we can get the most bang for our buck and the most uh, results is at the local level and at the state level. Um, and and, I, and that's the reason I'm in local office is to try to do what I can. I mean, it, you know, it, it's frustrating at the local level. We have a few good commissioners that stand up for the right things, um, and you know, but we're not the we're not the majority. And I'm trying to do everything I can to get good people to run next time so that we can have a majority at the local level. And so, but I, you know, this I, I am very much concerned that this is international. Uh, and I, I, they are collecting everything on us. I mean, there's, you know, there are reports that come out. It, you know, Edward Snowden revealed that. Um, there's stuff coming out all the time now. That, you know, there have been reports published on these fusion centers where the Department of Homeland Security has admitted that they do not know how much money they've spent on these fusion centers. Um, and, and they've all, you know, we're not even sure that some of them exist. They, they don't know how much money they've spent. They're, they're lying about how many exist. And a Senate that report showed that they've not been able to show that they actually successfully uh, stopped terrorism. You know, now they're, they're using them to gather everything to study us like lab rats, like you said, uh, but it's not improved anything. I mean, the Fourth yep. Amendment in this country is dead. Yeah, but it's being successful for the purpose that it was built for, and that is to collect all the information regarding everybody so that they can use it to control the people. Right. That right. is the chief objective rather than fighting terrorism. Right. That's exactly right. And, you know, the... The feds were smart well, how they hey, did Tana, it. Let me just tell you, I hear the music in the background. I think we've okay. come to the end of the program. Let me just tell you, it's been a pleasure to have you on as a guest.